today we will continue to discuss our A to D uh, uh, A to D converters because we have discussed so far about dual slope A to D and then successive approximation A to D converter and then flash ADC. In flash ADC we also discussed about uh, uh, pipeline uh, uh, architecture. Uh, now we discuss uh, uh, the other A to D converter that is uh, uh, sigma delta A to D converter. So, sigma delta A to ADC because in the uh, uh, other converters that is in uh, dual slope, we get the uh, dual slope noise ejection is good, but very slow. Noise ejection is the advantage, but slow. In the case of uh, uh, successive approximation, successive approximation ADC, uh, it is a question of around 2 microsecond uh, uh, per bit conversion or 1 microsecond per bit conversion uh, level of uh, time, uh, but then it needs uh, 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 sample and hold and so on. Uh, but the, to get uh, 8 bit 16 bit accuracy is uh, uh, 16 bit accuracy is possible, but then going for uh, 24 bit again it takes uh, uh, longer time and then we had also make uh, to, uh, for example, 24 bit converter means 24 bit uh, accurate uh, DT converter need to be made and uh, that is not easy. So, uh, success approximation if we take uh, getting getting 24 bit accuracy, 24 bit uh, uh, converter converter uh, is uh, is uh, is call, is difficult because we need difficult because we need 24 bit accuracy uh, difficult because we need uh, because we need um, 24 bit uh, uh, DAC. So, to uh, get uh, high accuracy okay, get high resolution, but not high accuracy then there is a possibility because that kind of application is there uh, in uh, uh, audio video products. So, if you are looking for say 24 bit resolution, but I am not looking for 24 bit accuracy uh, then sigma delta ADC is the uh, kind of converter that we should look for. So, uh, uh, when we need when we need uh, say 24 bit 24 bit or 32 bit resolution resolution but satisfied with the, but uh, satisfied with the 16 bit uh, accuracy accuracy you see then we can look for look for sigma delta ADC. So, let us see how the sigma delta ADC works. So, sigma delta ADC. Now, in this uh, uh, converters what is done is that you have the input voltage uh, the input voltage. Now, in the input voltage I will actually uh, give for example, to a uh, summing amplifier that the difference between these two voltages are uh, coming out here and uh, this I will connect to an uh, integrator. This integrator output is actually uh, I put here uh, ADC, ADC probably a uh, 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 16 bit ADC. Then this 16 bit is converted to a uh, DAC say 16 bit DAC. So, you have this it has its own reference and then this output of the DAC which is analog output is actually given to this and this DAC output uh, is actually 
processor for, uh, further. This is uh, uh, ADC output, sorry, ADC output. This uh, ADC, 16 bit, 16 bit ADC. Now, if you see how the circuit works, see initially uh, what is happening is that when the uh, voltage is uh, say if you have uh, some voltage, then if this is for example, uh, 0, then the entire voltage appears as it is. Suppose we have a V in input voltage V, then the inductor actually uh, slowly charges up to uh, minus and of course, it can be converted into plus having a uh, 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 inverter here for example, I can have a inverting stage here and the convert into plus. So, as the voltage is uh, applied here, the input voltage will be continuously rising with the time. So, if I look at the uh, output of that, it will be continuously rising with the time. Now, the 16 bit uh, uh, ADC uh, converts uh, this into a digital value and gives it back to uh, uh, this uh, analog input. So, the you give it to the DAC. So, essentially uh, what is happening is that whatever voltage is there at the output of the uh, ADC that it will return back at this point. So, this you will get back the original voltage, get back the original, original uh, voltage at this point we call this is V0, original V0. Now, this V0 is actually uh, again subtracted and then you get the difference between these two. So, you get V is the input voltage uh, V minus uh, V naught is what it is coming here. Now, the crux of this is like this. Suppose, if I am working with the 1 volt uh, uh, input voltage, assume that 1 volt is a full scale voltage, uh, assuming, assuming uh, ADC and the DAC references references uh, one volt. That means well, there are one volt uh, one volt. That means the full scale value of ADC and DAC are one volt. Now, uh, if the input voltage is exactly 0.5, for example, if the input is exactly 0.5, assume assume that. V input is exactly 0.5 volt. That means, if I look at the uh, ADC output, then, then uh, if, if V0 is also equal to 0.5 at some time, at some time, at some time, then ADC output would be output would be uh, you will have one uh, if 16 bit converter is there all other uh, bits are zeros. So, you have uh, only the top alone is 1 and the all the rest of the 15 bits are 0. Then DAC output would be DAC output would be equal to 0.5 volt assume this also accurate to 16 bit the DAC output is will be equal to 0.5 volt. So, you will you are given 0.5 volt uh, at this point and you got back 0.5 volt here and the input also 0.5 and this is uh, uh, 0.5. So, this uh, V naught this is uh, we call V x that is equal to 0. Since V x is 0 then uh, the input voltage the uh, uh, input to the uh, integrator is 0. So, input integrator will not change state. So, idea uh, the this this makes this makes adder output to 0 adder output to equal to 0. So, integrator will stop the integrator will stop charging. So, the integrator output remains constant. Uh, so, integrator remains uh, V out remains constant.
and ADC and DAC, everything uh, DT and everything uh, DAC are also give fixed route, also give fixed output. Route. Now, the that is this is exactly 0.5. Suppose uh, if it is a 16 bit converter, we said the input is 0.5. Assume the input is not 0.5, the input is uh, not 0.5, but it is little more than 0.5. Uh, if V in is not equal to uh, 0.5, if V in is equal to 0.5 plus some 10 micro volt. Uh, for 16 bit converter, for a 16 bit uh, converter, one LSP will be equal to one, uh, 1 by 2 power 16, that is 1 by 64,000, that actually uh, is a volt, that will come as 1 by 64 millivolt that will be equal to 1000 by 64 microvolt that is nearly equal to 16 microvolt. So, on LSP is 16 microvolt for a 16 bit converter. So, if we give the input voltage V in V in is equal to 0.5 volt then uh, uh, point v, v 0 actually V 0 is 0.5 that is if I give if I give per A to D here at this point 0.5 volt then I will get exactly the output as uh, MSB is 1 all the other bits will be 0. So, if that is if uh, uh, that is ADC input ADC input is 0.5 then out, its output will be its output will be um, the same uh, all the other 15 bits are 0. Same thing happens if V 0 is equal to 0.5 plus 10 micro volt then ADC will be again it will be uh, all the other 15 bits will be uh, 0 0. But same the DAC also will give only 0.5 volt. But now the problem is that if uh, uh, the summing amplifier because you have only 0.5 volt at the input. If you look at the figure again that you know we had the uh, uh, input voltage we are summing it here that plus minus summing it and that is given to the integrator. The integrator output is given to A to D. Now, if this is 0.5 volt input is 0.5 volt plus 10 micro volt this is uh, 0.5 volt because the DAC output DAC gives you from the ADC output what you are getting is again only 0.5 volt. So, it was originally sitting at uh, uh, 0.5 volt. Since this is 0.5 and this is uh, 0.5 you get error voltage of 10 micro volt here that will be charging up because we had said there is an inverter here. So, we have a uh, the uh, analog converter at this point, which will actually uh, if this is 10 micro volt, then the integrator will not uh, stop charging. Now, the integrator will be charging and then the V 0 what you have here will be increasing. So, if I uh, redraw this, it will look like this. So, uh, you have the input voltage. Uh, 0.5 plus 10 micro volt and you have the summing amplifier. So, this was giving 0.5 volt 
you got 10 microvolt uh, signal coming out here that is actually uh, integrated here and this is of course uh, inverted if required because that makes the ADC work in the positive side. So, with the time that your uh, voltage will be increasing now you got 10 microvolts. So, which was stopped earlier at 0 0.5 so 16 bit uh, ADC is the input to this and then the DAC gives you the output of 0.5 volt 16 bit uh, DAC. So, you got the uh, uh, input voltage coming in. So, now what happens this output will be start increasing with the time because you have here 0.5 volt here 0.5 plus 10 micro volt which makes the output increase with the time and uh, that makes after some time if the voltage goes to uh, at this point V0. So, V0 would be uh, if you look at V0. So, V0 with the time versus voltage that actually would be start rising uh, up. If the V0 goes when V0 uh, becomes becomes uh, 0.5 plus 16 micro volt. Then ADC output will come ADC output becomes 1 that uh, you have the and this becomes 1 because now you got 16 micro volt. 16 microvolt will be recognized as a 1 LSP and then the output will go high and that will make DAC output that DAC will give you 0.5 plus 16 microvolt. Where 1 LSP extra is the DAC is getting that will give uh, this. Uh, now, that, that means uh, the input to the summer becomes uh, 16 microvolt. That means now the new condition for the uh, uh, ADC looks like this that you have a summing amplifier here and then you have an input here for 0.5 volt and here it gives you 0.5 plus 16 micro volt here is 0.5 plus uh, 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 0.5 plus 10 micro volt. So, that actually becomes minus 6 micro volt. Now, the output of this would be minus 6 micro volt that actually when you give it to the integrator and then the inverter here then I give it to uh, ADC ADC and that is given to the DAC here. you get the this actually becomes 16 bit DAC. Now, here you uh, you get the input here the output is uh, uh, 0.5 plus 10 micro volt. So, you got minus 6 micro volt that will make the integrated discharge and this voltage started decreasing. So, the V0 since it is the integrator uh, integrator input is integrator input is negative. So, integrator integrator started discharging started discharging. So, V 0 started decreasing V 0 started decreasing. Then uh, V 0 becomes when V 0 becomes becomes 0 0.5 volt then again A D C becomes 1 
again it becomes 0 that uh, then DAC also become gives you uh, exactly 0.5 volt. Uh, this actually what happened is then because of this minus uh, 6 micro volt this started decreasing and then this are again become 0.5 volt. Once ADC become uh, DAC become 0.5 volt then uh, uh, summing amplifier output summing amplifier output you know we have here 0 0.5 plus 10 micro here actually uh, 0.5 then output becomes plus 10 micro volt. That means uh, that is that is uh, uh, that is uh, it will it will make it will make integrator to charge again to charge again charge again. Uh, so, V 0 also will increase V 0 will increase will start increasing. We will start increasing. That is, it will make integrator to charge again. So, V0 will start increasing. So, this will make again uh, ADC output as ADC output uh, 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 output will come as uh, again uh, the last on LSP will change to 1 and DAC again will give you 0.5 plus. 16 micro volt. So, if you look like this, this uh, 1 bit of ADC will be continuously changing 1 and 0. That is uh, ADC output if you look at uh, in time that you will get uh, continuously uh, changing the last 1 bit. The next time it becomes uh, 0 0 0 then uh, 0 0 1 and so on it will be keep uh, changing it. Now, if I am uh, seeing the uh, output in time domain, you know ADC output in time domain, what is the uh, ADC output? ADC output in time domain. What is the ADC output in time domain? Actually, uh, the ADC output, if you look at, you know, if you take uh, the uh, 100 samples for 100 samples for 100 samples samples uh, how many how many uh, lsbs will be one and how many how many lsbs will be zero this is the question that is uh, asked because uh, how many will be 1 out of 100 how many uh, will be 1 how many will be 100 for example if the input if the input is 0.5 volt then all 100 lsps will be zero If the input is 0.5 volt plus 8 micro volt, it is half LSP. The input is 0.5 uh, the 8 micro volt. Then, then you will see the then uh, uh, 50 LS 50 will be LSPs. 50 LSPs uh, will be one and 50 LSPs will be 0. That is out of 100, out of 100 samples you will find 50 uh, LS, 50 times it will be 1, the LSP will be 1 and 50 times LSP will read as 0. So, uh, this is because we are given input as 8 micro volt, input as 8 micro volt. So, when the, uh, when the when the input is uh, 8 micro volt then if you look at the summing amplifier and the integrator 
that it looks like this because we have an input here. The so we have input here uh, 0.5 plus 8 microvolt. Here actually the input is given, which is coming. Uh, if it is a 0.5 volt, then output is actually uh, plus 8 microvolt. Now in the other case, if the comparator we have the input 0.5 plus uh, 8 microvolt and then at the in ADC from ADC this is from DC sorry from DAC. So, this is also from DAC if this comes 0.5 plus 16 microvolt because 1 LSP is 16 microvolt then LSP is 1 for this is for uh, LSP 0 for LSP is 0 this is the case for LSP 1, LSP equal to 1, this is the case. So, now you will get uh, uh, minus 8 microvolt. So, if you look at the output at this point, it will be changing plus 8 microvolt, next it goes to minus 8 microvolt. So, charging and discharging will be equal. So, okay, that means, uh, the, AD, uh, the integrator sees equal amount of charging and discharging that is uh, integrated output if you see integrator output 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 you will see that it will have uh, if I look at the integrator here this is a V input. So, you get plus 8 microvolt of the time and minus 8 microvolt of the time. So, you will have a basically a square wave equal uh, going plus 8 minus 8 uh, plus 8 microvolt and this is going minus 8 microvolt. That will make the integrator output uh, look sitting at some point going up and down. The charging equal time going up and again it will discharge back to the uh, actual value. So, it will have equal uh, time going up and down because when it is uh, 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 plus if I look at the inverter output that is a uh, we have if you look at the uh, output V0 at respect to time then you will see that it is going equal amount of time. Uh, uh, going uh, uh, lower and higher. So, this will be uh, uh, 1 LSP up LSP is equal to 1 this will correspond to LSP is equal to 0. So, if you uh, since the slopes are equal so you will get when you digitize you will get uh, uh, equal number of time uh, 100 times if I sample the ADC output if the ADC is uh, uh, this integrated output is given to ATD converter. So, you have a ADC and this is given to the input. So, if I look at the ADC output I will get whatever may be the sample of the time uh, it will be high and of the time it will be uh, uh, low that is if I look at the LSB. So, LSB uh, out of 100 times 50 times will be higher and 50 times will be uh, lower. Uh, but if the for example, the input is uh, not uh, uh, 8 microvolt that is if I, the say if I take the summing amplifier if the input is 0.5 volt plus uh, 1 microvolt 1 microvolt then uh, the input to this will be 0.5 uh, volt then at that time uh, I will get uh, uh, here 1 microvolt plus 1 microvolt. Whereas, if I take the other option, we have the other option that you have 0.5 plus 1 microvolt here and then when LSP is on, I will get 0.5 plus 16 microvolt when LSP is 1 for LSP is equal to 1 for LSP is equal to 0. for LSP is equal to 0. 
So, this is the condition that you get for L s p is equal to 0 and L s p is equal to 1 and here the uh, output will be minus 15 micro volt. That means, now the discharging will be faster than charging. So, for this condition uh, the discharge will be faster than uh, for this for this uh, integrator discharge discharge is faster faster than charging. So, you will get the integrate output like this. So, the integrate output would be with a time versus a V 0 pi plot that you will get the uh, charging is uh, very slow. So, you will have the normal voltage here the charging actually uh, takes uh, time it goes to 16 uh, micro volt up then the discharges uh, very rapidly uh, to this point. So, this is uh, L s p 1 uh, L s p is equal to 1 and the L s p will be 0. So, you will get uh, discharge very rapid charging is very slow. So, uh, discharging charging is uh, slowly rising up and discharge is very rapid. So, this is actually charging. and uh, this is actually discharging. So, discharging is very rapid, charging is uh, 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 very slow. That means, you will find that um, if the transition is taking place at half a point, then you will find uh, L s p 1, L s p uh, 1 uh, uh, will be will be uh, for for less number of time, uh, uh, less number of uh, time uh, and L s p 0 will be obtained for more number of times. This is because we, we will find that when the uh, discharging is very rapid, discharging is very rapid, it gets down uh, below the threshold value required for the uh, converter quickly and then it uh, slowly rises back to uh, 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 1 volt slowly. So, you will find L s p uh, equal to 1 is for only very less amount of time and then L s p is equal to uh, 0 will be there for more amount of uh, uh, time. Now, that means, if the input voltage is uh, here it is for just 1 micro volt, whereas if I take uh, the input voltage equal to 0.5 plus 15 micro volt for uh, V in is equal to 0.5 plus 15 micro volt, then the condition would be that you will have 0.5 volt plus 15 micro volt and the input coming here if it is 0 then you will have 15 micro volt plus it micro volt. Now, in the other case you know if the uh, is for L s p 0. So, this will be 0.5 volt is for L s p is equal to 0 and L s p is equal to 1. So, you will get here the same 0.5 volt plus 15 micro volt and you get uh, 0.5 volt plus 16 micro volt and minus will be minus 1 micro volt. So, now the integrator will be there. Uh, uh, integrator will reach quickly the uh, 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 charging will be very fast recharging will be slow. Now, now uh, charging is fast and discharging is slow. and discharging is uh, uh, slow that will make uh, 
uh, uh, more number of times you will see uh, uh, for more number of times for uh, more number of times more number of times uh, LSP is 1 and uh, less number of times LSP equal to 0. So, obviously, if I sample over sample the ADC output then if I find how many number of times uh, LSP 1 and how many times LSP 1 the fraction uh, which was there between 0 and 16 micro volt can be uh, decoded. So, if you find the ratio between the ratio between between LSP is equal to 1 and between ratio between LSP equal to 1 and LSP is equal to 0 uh, LSP equal to 0 uh, is same as is same as same as ratio between between uh, V input and 16 micro volt V input and 16 micro volt that is the fraction ratio the same as ratio between uh, fractional V V in fractional uh, V in and 60 micro volt. For example, in this case, if it is 0.5 and 1 micro volt for uh, for example, for example, for V in is equal to 0.5 plus 1 micro volt, then the fraction is the fraction is 1 by uh, 16. For V input is equal to 0.5 plus 5 micro volt the fraction is uh, 5 by uh, 16. Uh, so, the uh, 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 ratio between 1s and 0s uh, LSP 1s and 0s uh, will also be the same fraction ratio which will be uh, the, the ADC LSB uh, 1 and LSP equal to 1 and LSP is equal to 0 ratio also would be also will be same as 1 by 16 and 5 by 16. So, by over sampling that means, if I take 100 samples and find out uh, 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 what is the uh, average between these two that will tell me the uh, average of the uh, input uh, that, that that will give me the uh, same uh, the input signal ratio that is uh, all that I do is I over sample the ADC. So, you over sample the ADC over sample sample the ADC and find out uh, n and n plus 1 n plus 1 yeah find out n and n plus 1 uh, at the output output so that the n by n plus 1 gives you uh, gives you the uh, 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 the same ratio as that of the fraction ratio for example it will be 1 by 16 in one case that is for five for for uh, 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 5 plus 1 micro volt n by n plus 1 would be equal to 5 by 16 for uh, sorry 0 0.5 for 0 0.5 plus 5 micro volt for uh, n by n plus 1 would be it would be equal to uh, 8 by 16 for input of 0.5 plus 8 micro volt that will be exactly half the time will be this. So, one can get uh, the higher resolution uh, ADC by over sampling. So, ADC resolution can be increased by over sampling by this way 
by this way uh, ADC resolution can be increased. increase by over sampling. So, the over sampling and uh, decimization and the averaging all that is done by normally uh, DSP. So, using DSP, using DSP over sampling and the calculations are carried out over sampling and the required calculations are carried out. the required uh, calculations are required calculations are uh, carried out. So, by uh, so one can get one can get uh, more than one can get resolution of resolution more than more than 16 bit using uh, 16 bit 16 bit ADC and DAC, but accuracy is limited to, but accuracy is limited to accuracy is limited to 16 bit only. So, this uh, kind of ADCs can be used in uh, signal processing for example, audio video processors where accuracy is uh, not a prime concern the resolution is all that uh, matters in that applications uh, higher bit uh, resolution can be easily obtained using sigma delta ADC. So, uh, this is how the sigma delta ADC works there are different uh, types of sigma delta ADCs are there which I am not discussing here. Uh, like there are uh, dual uh, 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 integrator signal slope ADCs are there, uh, 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 dual integrator sigma delta ADCs are there which we will not uh, discuss at this point, but the principle remains uh, same. So, we had seen uh, in this course uh, from the beginning uh, how the uh, tra transistors were working and how the operation amplifiers are working, how can you use the operation amplifier for signal conditioning and then error budgeting and so on for various uh, uh, things we have discussed. Now, let us uh, list what are things we have discussed in this course and then uh, we complete the course uh, with this. So, uh, uh, the if you look at the uh, uh, look back what we have discussed so far then the following items will emerge. So, we have started our uh, discussion with uh, transistor uh, transistor uh, applications. Here we have discussed about how to use a transistor as a switch, transistor as a switch how to use, we are given an example and then so on how to use the switch, then uh, transistor as a transistor as a uh, uh, latch, it is only how to use transistor as a latch, then how to use a transistor to boost the current, to boost the current. Uh, and then uh, and the transistor for uh, increase the, uh, the basically to increase the power. So, the in this sub, uh, we have discussed these applications in uh, 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 transistor and then we have also shown you uh, transistor as a switch in two types that is transistor as a switch uh, uh, keeping the beta uh, more than 1 and then beta less than 1. So, in the transistor switch we have seen two different items for beta uh, greater than 1 and then beta less than 1 that is in this case it is river collector base current is reverse bias in this case is base current is uh, forward bias. So, this is one application we are discussed in the beginning and uh, here we are also shown an example how to use uh, transistor to get uh, a voltage regulator. So, uh, one can also uh, recollect that that if you want to make a voltage regulator using a transistor we had shown you one uh, circuit like this that uh, we have a uh, error amplifier uh, for transistor. So, the classical uh, transistor circuit. 
So, we have the input here and then bias this and then we have shown the output given a feedback. So, that is uh, uh, V 0. So, we have shown uh, these applications in transistor. Then after discussing about the transistor, we have discussed about uh, uh, operation amplifier. We have also shown how the operation amplifier side evolved from transistor. The operation amplifier basically had come uh, mainly uh, to remove the uh, uh, problem that encountered in the transistor amplifiers because initially when the transistor amplifiers were uh, used, this is the kind of uh, uh, circuit they were using for amplify the signal and you have uh, AC signal were amplified using this. So, you have a plus voltage and then uh, amplified output was appearing here. Nevertheless, when they want to amplify a DC voltage, then they had encountered a problem because the drift was very high because the base emitter voltage drift was there. So, VBE, VBE drift, drift, uh, uh, drift created problem, created a problem, problem for DC amplification. So, from there only we had come out with the uh, uh, operation amplifier circuit where we can use the three transistor arms were used. So, we had the we had shown you an example with the three transistor uh, arm. So, wherein you get the output voltage So, we have the input here V input that become uh, V output, but this output voltage is drift free. This V 0 is not drifting, not drifting, not drifting due to due to temperature. This is one of the main achievement and that is how the uh, that is how the operation amplifier was bought. So, this is basically a mini operation amplifier and then we will explain to you this. From there the operation amplifier had come in and then we had discussed about uh, how to use the operation amplifier and then uh, 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 how to use them for the various circuit applications we had discussed. So, in that we had shown you that the operation amplifier can be used uh, for various purpose like uh, we had shown you the uh, the from a simple amplifier uh, like this uh, to uh, how to use this amplifier in a different configurations. So, one of the applications that we had shown in this was that how to make a voltage regulator, voltage regulator, regulator using op amp, using op amp. Then we also discussed about constant current sources, constant uh, uh, current source current sources how to make with op amp. In this condition we have also shown you 4 to 20 milli ampere current transmitters, 4 to 20 milli ampere uh, current transmitters were discussed. Uh, then we also shown, shown you uh, uh, different types of 4 to 20 current transmitters. Uh, we are also, also discussed uh, during the process uh, uh, about the transformer how the transformer works and how to use the transformer uh, for the voltage regulator and so on. Then we also discussed about how to make a, a LVDT for example, uh, LVDT signal conditioning, LVDT signal conditioning was discussed. Then we also discussed in elaborate manner capacitive transducer signal conditioning for capacitive transducers. So, in this process we also discussed about ratio transformer uh, bridge applications. So, we had explained you how to make, uh, make a uh, capacitive measurement that to very low capacitive measurement without involving the uh, 
uh, stay capacitance because the basic concept involved in the capacitance measurement is that if I have a uh, two methods we have discussed one is that if I have an amplifier with the input capacitance here then the output is connected to the output for example if I have a signal generator here then the stay capacitance 1 and stay capacitance 2 has no effect yes this is stay capacitance 1 stay 1 and then this is the stay capacitance 2 stay capacitance 2 these two capacitors has no effect uh, on the output signal. So, this was the main concept used uh, uh, in capacitor circuit design and this was actually compared with ratio transformer bridge how the uh, ratio transformer bridge works and then uh, the same concept was brought out in uh, uh, capacitance transducer uh, uh, and then how to make the capacitance measurement using op amp. So, uh, this was elaborately discussed uh, uh, in this uh, lecture. Then we also uh, discussed um, uh, various other like, uh, like solar, uh, uh, solar uh, based uh, battery charger we have discussed. We have shown a work out exam working out a worked out example uh, how to charge the uh, battery using a solar panel and then we also discussed uh, about how to use them as a uh, how to use the MOSFET as a switch that also was discussed. Uh, during that process we also discussed how to provide a short circuit protection uh, for the MOSFET. Uh, uh, then uh, we also uh, discussed uh, elaborately about errors involved in op amp uh, uh, usage. So, error budgeting concept was brought in, error budgeting because error budgeting is an important aspect in analog circuit. So, we had shown you in the uh, op amp errors uh, involved in the op amp like uh, offset voltage drift, offset uh, voltage drift then input uh, input uh, resistance effect then three output resistance then we also explain bias current uh, errors then cmr related errors So, these errors are uh, discussed in detail and I have shown you how to may, uh, how to make error budget. So, error uh, making error budget is an important task for analog circuit designer making an error budget, error budget for the circuit, for the circuit uh, is an important task. task for the analog circuit designer. A circuit uh, designer. Then we are uh, discussed about uh, uh, different types of A to D and DTA converters. So, then we are discussed about ADC and uh, DTA converters. In this we are discussed about uh, 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 dual slope, dual slope A to D converter, dual slope ADC with the uh, dual slope ADC with processor also we discussed, ADC with the microcontroller. Then errors involved uh, in this also discussed, errors uh, involved in uh, in this converters in this uh, converters also discussed also discussed we also uh, then uh, we are discussed about uh, other three converters that is uh, uh, successive approximation successive approximation at converter then uh, flash adc flash adc and then we also discussed sigma delta adc today so, if you see this one, we have started our journey uh, uh, 
long back and then we have come uh, in this 40 lectures uh, uh, various uh, items we have discussed particularly we concentrated more on the error budgeting and then the circuit design skill. Uh, so, as an analog circuit designer we had acquired the minimum the three skills major skills that one had acquired would be that uh, one is uh, uh, error budgeting. Then second one is uh, uh, circuit design, you know uh, how to use a uh, correct common and how to select a uh, uh, correct circuit for uh, uh, a given operation, circuit design skill. So, that uh, one knows how to connect various components uh, where, uh, in a correct working manner. And third one is various techniques involved like for example, we have discussed uh, how to measure a capacitance, how to get rid of stay capacitance or not. So, various uh, techniques involved for example, how to measure current uh, very techniques involved. So, these are the three skills uh, one have to acquire in the analog circuit design. I have introduced you all the three skills uh, with examples. So, one have to take the thread from here and uh, learn in this direction that will help you uh, to go uh, 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 a good uh, to go as a good circuit uh, analog circuit uh, designer to the uh, industry. So, uh, with this I will complete uh, this course. Thank you very much.